Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for this nice introduction. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, not only that I um, currently opened a startup here in Tokyo, so um, it's very just fresh out of the oven. Um, it's also my very first time to be here at the European Japan Center. So if you can maybe imagine, I'm um, a bit nervous. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm uh, trying my best now to give you some practical information from uh, the experience I've made uh, together with the GDPR. And uh, yeah, for this, thank you very much. My deepest gratitude. Thank you very much. So GDPR, the first six months in my today's session, I would like to share the small roundup with you. Um, so as I said, more from a practical perspective. Um, as a side note, if you would like to go with me into a discussion later in the networking reception, I'm waiting for you. I'm, I'm very I'm highly welcome for it. Um, to get started, I include four parts. This would be the JDA Data Protection 2.0, where I will go more into just a short back historical introduction about the GDPR. GDPR, don't panic. It's um, the first impressions after the 25th of May. Um, GDPR, GDPR project, uh, as I said, is more from a practical perspective. So how to implement the GDPR, or at least how to get a startup, how to implement the GDPR. And as a little um, surprise, GDPR, what is next? So I won't tell you right now what it is. So, yeah, I thank you again for the nice introduction <laughs> regarding the GDPR. Um, yes, I prepared a little uh, historical view on it. Uh, I hope it's fine. Um, so, data has been defined a new resource, and data has been defined the new oil of currency. It runs whole industries and is directly or indirectly part of our daily life. Methods of data processing, profiling, and automated decision making are improving constantly to enhance business processes and customer relations. So from the perspective, and sorry as a perspective from the GPO, from the perspective of the EU, it was just about time to update the old data protection directive from 1995 to protect its citizens against data and privacy breaches. Adopting the General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, after four years of development and released back in April 2016 in a two-year implementation phase, the new regulation became fully enforceable by May 25th of 2018. So, by replacing the old directive, the EU for the first time forces its data protection framework, and this is one key thing of the GDPR, forces its data protection framework onto all EU and non-EU companies, <coughs> institutions, as well as third parties which are processing or want to process data from data subjects residing within the EU. And in addition to that, fines have been dramatically increased up to 4% of annual global turnover or 20 million euro for most serious compliance agreements. So this is the GDPR right now from a Google Trends perspective. So six months after enforcement, the dust finally settled down and it has been quite lately. Um, so just looking at the Google Trends, um, the search interest about the keyword GDPR plummeted from its all time high. And uh, for better understanding, this is uh, the Google explanation. You have uh, 150 and so on. So 100 would re represent the highest interest in this keyword, and zero would be, according to Google, not enough data available. So from the moment when the mass media, and this was last year around October, November, so this was around the time when the mass media also uh, was aware about the GPR. Um, tons of articles have been released, 
and um, the popularity was increasing until its peak, 25th of May, and from then on, and if we have any analysts here, we went into, uh, let's say, data protection beer market. So um, we plummet uh, very much. So the hype is over, and we ended, now from my point of view, into the developing and consolidation phase. Um, just for an example of how the Gartner hype curve would look like, and this is maybe then also a, a good topic for later on discussion, um, because I would like to know what other people's opinion is about this trend we are now heading to, or if we're heading to. So when it comes to hype and everyone is involved, where there was not much experience with this new framework, sooner or later you will get in trouble, and it was just a matter of time when the first myths were around the corner. So this war, I mean, there were, there were a lot of myths about the GDPR, and this, those are some four um, interesting ones. So one would be the GDPR is just a legal thing. So just get a lawyer, get your DPO, and you're good to go, so everything is fine. Um, but the reality is, um, it's likely that lawyers, DPOs, and architects, project manager, are the key roles within the GDPR implementation. However, since the impact goes across the whole organization, all departments, or at least a task force consisting of members from each department, are, like, or are highly recommended to support this transition into this new framework. Another myth was encrypt everything, so um, following that advice would probably have the most impact on each company or every company and push probably every organization into their financial limits because encryption requires a lot of capacity from a um, technical perspective has therefore a huge impact on your IT environment. Encryption is also not for free and the GPR, and this is mostly the significant one, doesn't state that you have to encrypt everything. But of course, it's a matter of necessity. So, by involving a data protection impact assessment, for example, or a privacy impact assessment into your architecture decision, the risk and the necessity can be recognized, as well as balanced, and would be the first step to an appropriate solution finding. So, another one was the 100% compliance. So, there were some companies out there um, and businesses were advise, uh, advertising, we are 100% GPR compliant. And probably the feedback was 400% or really. Because, well, I don't want to go much into detail here, but um, when you, um, it was a very interesting development where service offerings found their way along with beautiful certificates stating 100% GDPR compliant, where there was one important thing. You will never be 100% GDPR compliant. <laughs> Simply because it's a dynamic framework which requires constant monitoring and maintenance. And the master of all this, 25th of May, the red line. So just by thinking, reaching the deadline of 25th of May, many companies were literally panicking about being compliant because the fear of being fined with high penalties but also the possible loss of their data and the resulting <coughs> business impact. Possible damage, on the other hand, was never part of the discussion. So, reputation, no one was talking about it. So, Mm. So, so, this ended in general from an architectural point of view into an implementation mess. Not that organizations didn't get understood the benefits in order to find potential to accumulate a return of the investment on a long-term scale. The primary OO plan was mainly designed to comply with legal requirements based on a short-term view while not facing the consequences to reinvest again in order to migrate into a more sophisticated, scalable framework. One of the results was, was 
the flood of emails many organizations sent to their customers with requests for opt-in, opt-out, because during that period, content became the holy grail in order to ensure lawful processing. That the GDPR offers more than one legal basis, like legitimate or public interest, contract or necessity, um, was for some reason off topic, and that collecting content with obligations, or, or that collecting content, and content comes with obligation, uh, as well as requirements um, of um, keeping track of the content, and also that the data subject would be able to withdraw content no one was talking about it and thinking about that. And the mystery kept going because once obtained data before the GDPR was enforced, this data was of course also allowed to process um, obliged to the conditions that you could provide proof and that obtained data is in compliance to the GDPR. <coughs> So the risk, what could have possibly happened when a business is going to contact a data subject or process its data while no records about a legal ground or any other sort of proof is available. From this moment, processing such data would have been unlawful. On the other hand, when a business did everything right in the first place and was able to provide proof, and compliance to the GDPR, but made then the mistake um, and asked again for consent, the chance for data loss was real simply due to the fact that the data subjects withdrew or was able to withdraw their consent. So there's another thing about the GDPR. It's a matter of motivation and awareness. So, still many companies are struggling with the implementation of the GDPR or data protection in general. Even after an implementation phase of two years, many companies are to date still at the beginning of compliance preparations or still didn't start yet. So, as mentioned earlier, um, the dust settled down, so does the motivation to implement the GDPR. So why is that? From the day of course to now, no huge enforcement action took place yet. No 20 million euro fines, no daily subject requests, no warning waves. Everything everyone was talking about didn't happen so far. So while the GDPR is a very good approach, it is losing its momentum and it gives confirmation to those who do not see a real risk not to proceed further, investing in governance, compliance and cybersecurity. And at the end, we will come together again and we will talk about strategic risk management. But of course, just to be fair, there are of course also many companies out there who do or did invest already a lot of money in order to ensure compliance before the 25th of May. There was a study before 20, uh, 2017, end of 2017, um, that um, some companies invested above 10 million US dollars just in order to comply with the GDPR. So, in order to, you know, the GDPR, the flip side of the GDPR is now to increase your motivation is to understand the benefits of the GDPR. So, and the benefits have been heavily underestimated. And it doesn't matter if you're obliged to the GDPR or not. The transition, including latest data protection and privacy standards, should be a general approach because it involves every one of us. And everyone has a private, personal feeling how a company you know, is using our data. And it may hurt especially companies who accumulated this topic for years until today without further progress, so of course they do face harsh consequences now. 
Deciding on a transition also means that you should use this chance to refresh your business by clearing out old, out, uh, clearing out old processes or architectures, strategies, IT infrastructure, which turns out not to be sufficient anymore or is currently or now too expensive. So talking about cloud solutions. Since the GPR reaches into many different areas of a business, the chances Chances are high to identify possibilities in order to return your investment over a long-term period by saving costs and increasing productivity. Most importantly, it is a very good way to deepen, and this is, I guess, the most important thing, is a good way to deepen the relationship to your customers. By simply showing them that you care about their data, that you care about their privacy, and most important, their being. So what could you, for example, consider? You could consider process and task in terms of creation or optimization. You can consider about cost reduction, automation in order to increase productivity. So when you go into a process analyzation, you will probably look for, okay, what tasks are done manually, what tasks could be automated, Analysis of the IT environment to identify possible cost savings and performance issues. And of course, better reputation through higher standards in terms of governance and technical compliance. But also through supporting customers by helping them to execute their rights. Everything includes into a scalable environment which then ensures future growth and without hassle. So at the end, the chance is high that you're able to improve your business on many different levels. So this could be indeed a very good future investment. So going into a project, into a GDPR project, I guess the, the baseline always is how do we set even up project planning? So this is the experience I've made. Um, where to start? And um, when thinking about a good implementation framework, it may disappoint you to hear that there is no such framework out there to rule them all. It's not possible. Just by the fact that every business is very individual, has very own needs and requirements. But the right project plan and its position segments are an important step to guide you through the implementation with clear milestones. So we separate it into the CMO, the current mode of operation, which is the analyzing phase of each project. Understand the current situation of your business, ensure that proper documentation is available, and of course, up to date. You have to check about the governance, the IT, business intelligence, data flows, and so on and so on. Once you accomplish this, you would move into the transition and transformation. This is the concept phase. So this is the moment when you take CMO and the guideline GDPR into consideration and create a transition concept into the GDPR. The TMO would be the transition mode of operation. So this is then the very moment when you start to implement the concept you just created in the TT phase with the final end to reach the FMO, the future mode of operation, which results at the end of, at the, uh, into business as usual. So the FMO would be the last step in this project plan after the transition is complete. But as easy as it maybe sounds, the way until FMO be a is full of traps, because building a project plan may turn out to be very difficult. This is then the case when you have to start from scratch under greenfield conditions. So you need a good time, resource, and budget management, and of course a good team. As I mentioned earlier, a good documentation is key because it also will drastically shorten the time within the CMO analysis. So because the CMO is one of the most, you know, um, difficult part during the transition or building the transition. Anyhow, 
If you are prepared, then there is nothing to worry, and if you are not, you have no time to lose. The important point is, it makes a difference to a data protection authority or data protection authorities in general, if a business is doing nothing or is not yet compliant, but aware of the situation and taking action. So what is next? Probably the next panic wave, but the next is e-privacy, e-privacy regulation. A new drafted legislation still in force or applicable and supposed to complement the GDPR, which will replace the e-privacy directive from 2002. Concerning the processing of personal data and electronic communications. <coughs> This is the difference between the GDPR and the e-privacy. The GDPR is related to data protection, and the e-privacy is related to data privacy. As well as the directive, the regulation will focus on marketing up to e-commerce, consent, IoT, big data, artificial intelligence, and everything related to data mining, cookies, and tracking. Until now, the e-privacy regulation has not been approved yet, so it's still in the draft state. And when exactly the new regulation will come into force, still needs to be clarified. So about the e-privacy, in short, it will replace the directive. The estimation I have to add on is probably early 20, uh, 20, 2019. It's supposed to complement the GDPR, directly applicable in member states, <coughs> Same tutorial scope as the GDPR, specifically covers new communications like Facebook, Skype, WhatsApp, etc. <coughs> and thank you once again. <laughs> so, um, yeah, this is what I guess the most interesting topic I was, but I'm still waiting that this is going to be finalized. So, with the latest trading partnership agreement between Europe and Japan comes the adequate decision to ensure free data flow on the same guarantees. <laughs> adequate decision is one mechanism based on Article 45, where transfer of personal data to a third country or an international organization may take place. If a country outside the EU offers an adequate level of uh, data protection and has been approved by the EU Commission. In July 2018, after the talks on the reciprocal adequacy between the EU and Japan were successfully concluded in July 2018, the EU Commission has published the draft adequacy decision back on 5th September 2018. And this decision, the EU Commission explained that Japan adopted supplementary rules in order to enhance its own data protection standards. So, based on a detailed review, the EU Commission concludes that the interaction between the provisions of Japan's Act on Protection of Personal Information, APPI, and the supplementary rules ensure an adequate level of protection for personal data transfer to Japan. Once the adequacy decision is in place, and whenever data flows from the EU to Japan, the same guarantees as those under the EU law will continue to apply. This would be, for example, the purpose of processing. Data is only processed for the purpose for which they were legally transferred from the EU. Data is processed to the extent necessary for this purpose. Data retention and integrity Data is kept for no longer than necessary for this purpose. The data is kept accurate and up-to-date. Data is never further transferred to individuals or entities abroad which do not guarantee an adequate level of protection, unless consent is given. Also, the topic of data subject rights. The processing should be done on the appropriate security <coughs> measures, protected against unauthorized or unlawful processing, and against accidental loss, destruction, or damage. But beside those, EU individuals will benefit from 
equal EU rights. Be informed about the purpose of processing of her personal data, request access to his or her personal data, request correction or deletion of his or her personal data if they are inaccurate. Furthermore, enforcement mechanisms will be in place through an independent supervisor authority. So in Japan, the independent data supervisor authority would be the PPC, which can investigate about the processing of personal data by Japanese business operators. And if it finds irregularities, can issue, uh, can issue binding decisions. But also the possibilities to obtain redress if an EU individual is not happy with how his or her data have been processed or his or her rights res respected, he or she can have resource to extensive mediation, complain to the Japanese Data Protection Authority, or file even a civil action with the Japanese court to obtain damages or injunction. So the question is when the adoption will take place. Expectations are early 2019. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, at the current state, after the decision by the College of uh, Commissioners, is this correct? Yeah. Okay. So, and still, there's more to care about because most likely we can expect further updates on the GDPR, and those are some topics of it. Of course, artificial intelligence is still a very hot topic and a very new, fresh out of the open topic. Internet of Things, e-health, blockchain, data ethics, EU regional harmonization of laws, and global standardization of laws. When and how those updates are going to happen is still unknown, but there are some drafts already, especially to AI. Um, but looking in general on the global development, regarding data protection and privacy legislation, we do see serious progress. So also if I think about now the US, uh, the California Act, which will be in place uh, 2020. So scraping everything together, the GDPR and other latest frameworks uh, like Japan's API are still young and there is still room for improvement. Nevertheless, what has been accomplished by everyone involved was a step into the right direction. Even the first wave of implementation was mostly driven by panic and fear, rather than equality. As well as missing conservation, what latest data protection and privacy can really do, not only from a legal and business perspective. Beside the huge potential, there is still a problem regarding awareness, and this is also what uh, Stephen said. However, I believe this will just be a matter of time. Until then, I look forward to the next future update. Thank you very much. Thank you. My name is Hayashi uh, of the uh, uh, Japan Center for Economic Research, and I'm also the research fellow of the, one of the uh, major electric uh, companies in Japan. Uh, so, uh, uh, thank you, Helena uh, <laughs> for going to And the, uh, I, I, I could understand the six months uh, of the GDPR is uh, rather quiet, but the new wave uh, may come. Uh, and the, uh, uh, I think uh, I'm not very much interested in the uh, uh, new topic of the e-privacy. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, uh, as I said, I'm uh, interested in the global reach because uh, you mentioned about the AI or other uh, IoT. Or, uh, so or if, you, uh, if uh, EU includes such a new idea, I think the, uh, the possibility of the uh, kind of the, as I said, conflict uh, uh, between the major uh, countries uh, will be uh, more. Uh, the other day, I uh, discussed with the uh, uh, person of the uh, from the uh, Brussels or mm -hmm. in charge of the uh, internet law, and the, uh, generally, I should say uh, that may, might uh, apply to the, also the IP. Uh, but the general idea of the uh, let's say data uh, first among the uh, developed countries, uh, this is first thing. Uh, even though we have the common understanding of the rule of law, uh, uh, human rights. Uh, uh, 
still, uh, first, uh, between the US and the Europe, uh, US uh, tend to think that uh, as a, a kind of the uh, social common uh, goods, <laughs> which will be to the, uh, at uh, Google. And that the, of course, uh, Europe uh, make the importance on the privacy, uh, the core values of, of the uh, human rights. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Japan, uh, <laughs> uh, I think anyway, uh, the brothers, uh, uh, they, they easily permitted to three if they are fixed so uh, we can avoid the problem. Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, I'd like to say the uh, definition of the data may be uh, general idea will be different. So, especially with the US, I'd like to ask, uh, uh, there will be a conflict if they, you, if they uh, read the idea on it. And the second thing is uh, for the, sorry, I, I will finish in 13 seconds. <laughs> uh, uh, developing countries, especially China, uh, so because they have a totally different idea of the data, uh, they can be uh, owned jointly by the uh, big giant company and the uh, states, and they also the uh, consumers are very generous to pro give their own data. So, US and China. US and China regarding e price? Yes, the US, the EU, and the China, EU. So, so. Okay. I mean, this is um, the one thing I, I mentioned the e privacy um, has the same territory scope as the GDPR. So, and this means that the company located in the US or China um, is of course obliged to this point as well. So yes, um, especially from the US and from some companies, um, there are some that say we see GDPR and e-privacy more as like an innovation killer. Because as you said, data is just like everywhere, it's social common, we can just use it and start to, you know, develop something and use the data without caring. But this is actually the good thing about the GDPR and the territorial scope. So the EU enforces this to those com or to this company. You have to do this if you want to use the data from our citizens within the EU. So there's, there's no way around. So what they can do, of course, in the case of international data, uh, cross-border data transfer, they also have to ensure the same um, safeguards, for example, so we talk about uh, binding corporate rules or if there's an adequate decision, like for example the privacy shield and the GDPR. So of course there are some, some measures um, as a, let's say, to wrap it up and to make it safe. But of course, and then we're back to the point of awareness and um, the matter of Article 25 about privacy uh, by default and design. And you know, myself, I was also a developer and I enterprise IT architect. And um, I guess the, from a developer perspective, um, security and data protection is always at the end of, of the chain, you know, because you want to develop and you want to bring your product. But the real innovation right now starts with the regulation because the GDPR takes this last step, so even from a developer perspective to the first step. So now you have to think about how to make your solution compliant to the GDPR and care about the fundamental rights of freedoms and rights and um, this is now a total game changer. So if this answers your question, um, if not, um, I would then, if you want, we can go more into details and discussion. Okay. Yeah? Thank you. 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 Thank